The Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game has over 10,000 unique cards for players to collect, trade, and construct their own personal decks. But what would happen if players only had access to the bare minimum? In this series, both the RJB0 and myself will each open a very select amount of sealed product. Once we open that product, we must build a deck using only those specific cards pulled, that's it. And at the end of each episode, we discard the entirety of our pulls to the graveyard and start from scratch with a new product. Every card counts. This is Yu-Gi-Oh! Sealed Showdown. I actually feel kind of bad for Robert after that last episode. I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say. If I open two Jinzo, two Imperial Order, I don't know how he's going to be winning that. But that's sort of the fun of Sealed Showdown, right? You never know what you're going to get. And this brings us into today's episode. And in the spirit of Sealed Showdown, we can actually do something a little bit different and we can take our first foray into non-main booster pack products. And we're going to be doing that with the 2002 collector tin. So what we're going to be doing is Robert and I are both going to get a full set of these tins, one of each, and each of these tins contains its respective promo, which will be usable for us. So we're each going to get a Dark Magician, Blue Eyes, Red Eyes, Summon Skull, Lord of D, and Black Skull Dragon. And we are also going to get the booster packs contained within. So we're going to get two Legend of Blue Eyes, two Metal Raiders, and one Spell Ruler pack. Do that times six. We're going to get 12 Legend of Blue Eyes, 12 Metal Raiders, and six spell ruler packs to work with so that way we can kind of get the best of both worlds we can see what it's like if we're pooling a bunch of cards together from multiple different sets we were supposed to do this prior to the pharaoh servant episode but we actually forgot about it so we're taking a step back but i think this is going to be an interesting way that sealed showdown can progress in ways other series cannot and i can't wait to see what happens furthermore since we're taking a step back to legend of blue eyes metal raiders and magic ruler one of the biggest changes you wanted to see made to the sealed showdown series was the auto inclusion of three polymerization for both Robert and myself and after talking it over we think this makes a lot of sense we would have done this earlier but both magic ruler and pharaoh servant don't have any fusion monsters so it didn't really make sense to discuss it then so we already made this decision a while ago you guys are just now seeing that we are going to do it but it makes sense because otherwise we have to forego an entire summoning mechanic and typically like with ritual monsters the ritual spell is released in the same set so having polymerization at three makes sense so we can actually take advantage of the fusion monsters that we open and that way it adds some more variety and we get to see more shenanigans like me beating Robert with Flower Wolf. All right folks I am now two losses in the hole. I did lose last episode to arguably the stupidest pulls in the history of online Yu-Gi-Oh. However, while that is a valid excuse this time around, it is not a useful one. There are three points of growth that I've noticed for my losses so far. Number one, not reading the cards. This is a meme for a reason. I've been out of the game for forever. I forget that things work the way that they do. I really need to take the time to make sure that I actually know what I'm talking about. This is not going to be nearly as much of an issue since I'm opening purely reprints today, but it is definitely something I'm going to need to pay attention to. Number two, I need to form a mo more coherent game plan, and that coherent game plan has to account more for for what I expect Alex to play than I have played in the past. This was a major issue in Magic Ruler when it came to my Empty Jar deck. I was not prepared to play against what I expected Alex to play. Speaking of the Empty Jar episode, part three is stick to the game plan. I need to, when I am in game, remember what my plan is and stick to it. This has been a big sticking point for me. Uh, once again, during the Magic Ruler episode, I made some misplays where I knew what my plan was and I knew what cards I had to play in what order and what I had to do with Alex's plan in order to win but I didn't execute. So I really need to stick to my game plan. So those are my three points of growth I'm going to focus on for this episode. And this episode is really exciting for me. Pharaoh's Servant 
is a long gone memory now. Jinzo is gone. I have my boys in front of me. That's right, the 2002 collectible tins. I get six promos. Some of them are pretty good, some of them are not, but more importantly, we get those packs. And I'm gonna start off with my 12 packs of Legend of Blue Eyes. We're also gonna take a different approach here. We're actually just gonna go straight to the pack opening from now on. We feel that it's been a little bit repetitive talking about the cards first, then doing the pack opening and then the deck discussion. So we're gonna skip the first part, just go straight into the packs. You guys let us know down in the comments if you like this way a lot better. All right, 24, oh, actually that's not right. Uh, 12 packs of Legend of Blue Eyes coming up first. We have to do this a little bit odd. There's no 12 packs that we can crack on this website. So we're gonna do this in groups of six. So that way we have the giant card pool at the end for us to look at. So don't mind the number down here. Let's flip up the first one. Oh, that is not a good start. Holy shit, that is looking much better. Dark Hole and Giant Soldier of Stone. These are the types of cards we need out of LOB. Dark Hole is massive. I was actually excited about this, but then I remember we get Summon Skull in the tin, so I don't think this is as good as it otherwise would be. But Curse of Dragon coming in the super rare slot, that's not bad. A few beaters and a couple of other spells, nothing too exciting, but that would have been really nice to actually have in the LOB episode. First pack, nothing really to speak of here. There's an Arabi, but there are beaters that are vastly better in other sets. Okay, Final Flame is a burn card. Follow Wind is out of meta as of the end of LOB. Dragonus the Wicked Knight, 1200 is not going to be enough. Remove Trap, however, may be relevant. Okay, stop defense. That's actually a very good pull. This will definitely make its way into the main deck to stop any of those 2K defenders because that's what this format is all about. Really happy to see this one. Remove Trap is actually a bit interesting because since now we're mixing LOB with Metal Raiders and Magic Ruler, there are some very devastating trap cards in Metal Raiders. And if you saw the Metal Raiders episode, you know all about that. So I might actually side deck this because it it is technically removal, and I think that wouldn't be too bad to have access to. Okay, so moving on to pack seven for LOB. Don't know if that's going to matter or not, and it uh, looks like we got a pretty good one here. Spirit of the Harp. Skull Redbird normally would be very good, but we're not just playing LOB this time around, so I actually don't think this card is nearly as important as it otherwise would be. Magic Ruler and Metal Raiders have much better beaters. Okay, still not seeing much. Yami may come up. That's not a dead card. What can we pull? Stop defense. I I do like to see that. Oh, that's what we want to see. Fisher, a nice piece of removal. Only one of it so far. If we could get maybe one more in our last four packs here, I'd really like to see that. And that's our third remove trap. So that's looking pretty good. Another Spirit of the Harp. That's pretty nice for the 2K Defender Department because those can sometimes be a little bit difficult to come by because they are a little bit higher rarity. Not going to complain. Okay, three Spirit of the Harp. That might just be good enough to make the main deck because that can basically hold off everything in the format apart from Jirai Gumo. I I guess, and maybe, I guess, Summon Skull or any of the Tribute Monsters, but not bad. LOB not looking great so far. Gravedigger Ghoul, Remove Trap is once again a usable card. A Flower Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I am being mocked. However, we do have three free copies of Polly in this set, so Flower Wolf it could be worse. A two-pronged attack is something, but after LOB format, that's not something I really want to be seeing. Chose a great time to show up. Overall, so far, LOB just looks like a mockery of my LOB pulls in the first episode. Okay, so this is going to be our last pack of Legend of Blue Eyes, and then we're going to move straight on to Metal Raiders. Let's hope it's a good one. Oh, okay. I mean, Flame Swordsman, we did get actually in our LOB poll, which is kind of fun. Arm Ninja's okay. We may have a lot of spells flying around, so this could come up. This may make its way into the side deck at the very least, but let's go ahead and crack some Metal Raiders. All right, so now we get to crack open 12 packs of Metal Raiders. This is where things are going to start to get very interesting. Let's flip them up. Uh, okay. Oh, actually, this is fantastic. I was about to say Muka Muka, you know, is okay, but there's a Jirai Gumo. I actually missed out on this in the Metal Raiders episode. And so now that I actually get a chance to play this, the tables are going to be much more even than they were before. Block attack is a nice piece of removal, just like how stop defense is. And I think this is going to definitely make its way into the main deck. 
first pack. Catapult Turtle is hilarious, but I do love seeing Cocoon of Evolution. That's a two grand defender. King of Yamimikai exists. And then there's Jirai Gumo, which is great to see. Love to see that. Catapult Turtle is a 2000 defender with a kind of funny effect. There may be a possibility that I use that. Already starting off way better than LOB. Twin Headed Thunder Dragon. If I can get the other Thunder Dragons, that's actually a really cool card to see. It was terrible the first round because we didn't have Polly, but it's actually potentially usable here. German faction is also not bad. Neither is Empress Judge. All right, in this next pack, I'm seeing Rabid Horseman, which is not great. Shadow Ghoul is a card. It has a place. Crass Clown is an interesting one because it works with the clown control strategy. We'll see if we can pick up the cards necessary to continue with that. Ooh, 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 ooh. This is interesting. This is a card I don't actually believe Robert or I pulled in Metal Raider. Shield and Sword. And we also have a lot of 2k defense we have three Spirit of the Harp, a Giant Soldier of Stone, and here's actually a Prevent Rat as well. We can use Shield and Sword to turn all of these into 2,000 attackers and just start slamming in if the opportunity presents itself. That's not bad. Second copy of Block Attack. Really nice to see the spells here. I'm really happy about that. Elegant Egotist is cool if we get Harpy Lady Sisters, I guess, but the rest of this pack is kind of whatever. Wow, that actually completes our playset of Block Attack. Can't really complain. I mean, that's one of the best commons in the set. I would like to see some more Jirai Gumos or Seven Colored Fish. Maybe some of the Searchers or, you know, some of the stronger cards in the rare slot because Starboy is not cutting it. Seeing a fake trap, that's not excellent. Deep Sea Shark is not great either. It's ironically better than Flower Wolf. There's a Dream Clown though, which is again potentially useful in that clown control strategy. What's next? Blade Fi, Electric Lizard, not a lot to speak of here. Pack number six. Witch of the Black Forest and Jirai Gumo and Paralyzing Potion. This is already looking so much better. Fantastic. There's a second Jirai Gumo. Really happy to see it. Everything else in the pack is kind of whatever, but for our first six packs, we're actually looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and crack six more. This pack's not bad. Blue Wing and Crown's like a decent beater. Unhappy Maiden's a card I actually looked over in Metal Raiders, and it's actually pretty decent, so we may play it. Stim Pack's pretty good, although Magic Ruler has some of the better equip spells, but we only get six packs of that, so we may not even pull them. Let's see what else we get. There we go. Finally, Witch of the Black Forest is a 100% auto-include in our deck. There's good old Pump King. I don't think we have to resort to playing him this time around, but it's nice to see him back. All right, you guys, so this is our final pack of Metal Raiders, and then we have six packs of Magic Ruler to crack as well before we have to start deck building. Let's flip them up. Oh, uh, ooh, White Magical Hat. Eh, he's kind of an iffy one because just so many beaters can just out-hit this, but if we get an open board. This card can be nasty. Also a seven colored fish. I think this is the first one of these that we pulled. I think we only got one in the previous Metal Raiders episode as well, but we have dry gumos this time, so I think we're going to be much better off. Another catapult turtle and another dream clown. This is starting to look like something. I'm not sure what it's looking like, but it's looking like something. Let's move on to our next pack. A magician of faith. That's not bad. I don't have a huge amount to work with with it, but I can use that. A dark elf. Love to see the Dark Elf, and I believe that was a Prevent Rat and a Cocoon of Evolution and a Paralyzing Potion. Since I already have a Summoned Skull to work with in my deck, that's actually a couple of real cards. All right, so then wrapping up the pack opening, we have six packs of Magic Ruler. This is gonna be a very interesting episode, and I'm looking forward to see what Robert brings to the table. Let's go ahead and flip up the first ones and see. Oh, out of all the super rares that that could have been, that is not one of the good ones. Invader of the Throne is a very, very potentially good card, but it's, uh, I don't think it's good enough. Cyber Jar. Okay. Cyber Jar can really spice things up. I believe also a guardian of the throne room. That's not bad either. Fairy's hand mirror may make its way into the mayor's side deck. And we also have toll upstart goblin. I think the format might be a little bit too slow for this. And curse of fiend is an interesting piece of removal. We may play that as well. Oh my god, painful choice. I don't even think it's that good in our format because we don't really have like graveyard recursion or anything like that. So maybe it's good. Oh man, I'm gonna have to look to figure that one out. Shining Angel's nice. It is a recruiter, but I don't know how good our light targets are for this. All right, Magic Ruler. Gotta have you come in clutch for me. Metal Raiders was okay. Legend of Blue Eyes was terrible. 
what can I get? Let us see with the first pack. Giant Germ Delinquent Duo. Oh, that is a hit. Okay, I love to see the Delinquent Duo. Guardian of the Throne Room is a pretty good card. Upstart Goblin is pretty real. Eternal Rest may come up if I get two more Giant Germs, which I'm not hugely optimistic for, but it may come up. This is not a bad pack. Pack number three, halfway through Magic Ruler. Nimble Mamanga. Oh no, if only that had been a Giant Germ. That's okay, that's okay. We're not out of this. High Tide Gyojin is a pretty pretty decent card out of this set. Okay, Shining Angel is okay. I don't know if it has any decent targets. Gravekeeper Servant is hilarious to see, but I really doubt that I'm actually going to use it. Let's see what we got. A Cyber Jar and another Upstart. Okay, this is a great pack. This is our last pack. Flipping up the cards. Okay, Dark Zebra is not a, a totally awful card. It is usable Heroes Shadow Scout. This opening has just been giving me all the cards that I wish that I got from the episode where I actually opened them. But Dark Zebra is a great card to see. I'm seeing mostly a vanilla beats deck, but with some really interesting things to play with. Let's load this into the collection and see what I can come up with. Okay, Malevolent Nuzzler. I think that's the first one of these I've seen. Nimble Mamanga is cool, but I don't think we're going to actually pull more more than one of this. I mean, I guess we could technically in the next pack. Chain Energy is also something interesting as well, just because it could be for a slight burn strategy. Let's go ahead and flip up the last pack, and then we've got some deck building to do. This has been interesting. This has been really int- Oh my god, a second Cyber Jar. Are you kidding me? That is crazy. So, Cyber Jar is good. Dark Zebra is not bad either. Gravekeeper Servant, we saw this in uh, one of the previous episodes. Various Hand Mirror, again, is a very interesting card too. Interesting. Very, very interesting. We're gonna have to look through some of these cards and try to find some synergies because uh, the whole game has changed now. Well, folks, that was a weird as fuck opening. I don't know what I was supposed to do with that. I expected that I suppose I was going to get a better collection of cards, but I really should not have expected that from just a bunch of random packs, essentially. There is a very good chance that Alex pulled just drastically better than me. There are some of those possibilities that I can make a contingency plan for them, and some of them I just can't. So let's just take a look at this deck and the conglomeration of fuckery I could put together for this. We're gonna start off in Bungusville, which starts off in order of the biggest Bunguses, with Blue Eyes, Summon Skull, Flame Cerberus, Shadow Ghoul, Jirai Gumo, and Dark Elf, which hopefully in and of themselves are enough to win the game. We've got Flash Assailant, which doubles as both Bungus and Booty. We've got Dark Zebra. We've got Guardian of the Throne Room, High Tide Gyojin, blue winged crown. Yeah, I was really scraping the bottom of the barrel by the end of that. Then we move over to Booty Town. We've got Prevent Rat. We've got Cocoon of Evolution. We have Castle of Dark Illusions. And we have the meme itself, Ceremonial Bell. Next, we have some actually promising cards. Witch of the Black Forest and Magician of Faith and Cyber Jar are all great effect monsters for me to get. Is there a lot for me to do with them? Not really, but Witch of the Black Forest at least gets me to things like Summon Skull and Jirai Guma, which is not bad at all. Masked Sorcerer is funny because I'm running a lot of cards in this deck that boost its defense. So there's a possibility that Alex just kind of like runs into this thing once and that's enough to get me somewhere. I don't know. I'm telling y'all, I did not get much. Moving on to the spell card slot, we're starting with the equip spells, which is really the highlight of what I drew. I got two Paralyzing Potion and two Germ Infection. Really not terrible in that department. These are all control cards that may allow me to get over some of the bigger cards that Alex has, may have gotten, like Jirai Gumo, Flame Cerberus. We've got Sword of the Deep Seated. It increases attack. Dark Energy. It increases attack and defense on fiend-type monsters, both of which may be relevant. Laser Cannon Armor makes Jirai Gumo big and also Cocoon of Evolution. Yami is good for a lot of my monsters. Chorus of Sanctuary. I may just have to go with the booty until I get to something big strategy. Shadow Ghoul could be a just win condition if I can get enough monsters in the graveyard. So just delaying until I get worthwhile cards may be the strat here. The Reliable Guardian helps my monsters stay alive for another turn. Stop Defense is basically the closest thing I've gotten to a reliable removal spell. Upstart Goblin. I was honestly desperate for slots, and having two blank cards in the deck? Not bad at all. And then Darkness Approaches. As pathetic as it sounds, this card may be worthwhile just to get cards out of my hand to use Flash Assailant. It's also good because it can set down some of the bigger monsters, including Summon 
Golden Skull, which is not a threat when it's face down, as well as Jirai Gumo, and then finally Delinquent Duo. This card is incredible. If I can draw it, I am probably in much better shape than I've ever been in this series, but that's a real big ask with a one of. And then finally, two pronged attack. I don't have any removal in this deck, and if Alex sticks something like a Blue Eyes, I may be in really, really big trouble unless I can get to this or Paralyzing Potion. I needed something, and that's the main deck. Oh boy, folks. This is this is a heck of one. My side deck is actually close to being something competent, though. I've got Eternal Rest. I've got a lot of equip spells. If Alex also has a lot of equip spells, this card may be worth bringing in just to be able to destroy Alex's monsters by either equipping them with my equip spells or using his equip spells against him. Remove Trap may be relevant if Alex gets a lot of things like Two-Pronged Attack or if he gets a Mirror Force. And then Chorus of Sanctuary, just the third one. If Alex has a very field spell focused deck, it may be worth worthwhile for me to just be able to set over Alex's field spells and once again protect my booties. Dragon Capture Jar. In the instance that Alex can do something like use a Black Skull Dragon or Blue Eyes effectively, it, I, I may need it. Catapult Turtle, I got two of these. I really wish that I had anything to do with them. But if this goes into a really stall-based game, or if I get Alex down to few enough life points, it may actually come up. We've got two Snake Fangs, again against defense, those big booties. I've got the Clown control strategy, Crass Clown has 1400 defense or 1700 defense under Yami or 2000 defense under both that and Dark Energy, and then Dream Clown destroys card so it's better than Crass Clown. And the last few cards are really just burn cards in case Alex brought a lot of copies of Jirai Gumo to the table. I don't expect this to do spectacular things, but the fact that I have two Jirai Gumo, a Dark Elf, and a Witch of the Black Forest may just get us to the other side. Let's get into it, folks. All right, you guys. So this is the deck we are bringing to today's duel. And this definitely looks like a deck you would build out of some 2002 collector's tins. But this is interesting. We're adding some new dynamics because now Robert and I both have access to some certain cards that we didn't really have access to before. And so I'm curious to see what he's going to bring because uh, there's a lot of different ways you could take this depending on the pulls that you got. And getting like half of your cards from one set and the other half from another, you get some advantages, but you also lose out on getting some of the cards in those specific sets as well. So it's a different type of environment, right? So let's go ahead and do the card by card. So first up, Ceremonial Bell. The only reason I'm playing this is because 1850 defense, and it kind of holds off everything in the format. So it is a bit gimmicky, but I think it's good enough. The only thing it doesn't stop is like Jirai Gumo, Dark Elf, and like anything with an equip spell, I guess. Two Cyber Jar, happy to see this. This is going to be great to just spam the board with monsters, and I think it's going to accelerate the pace of the game quite quickly. Dark Zebra is just an 18 I am playing Invader of the Throne. I'm very iffy about this, but there could be a scenario where I can take something of Roberts that is actually really good. The biggest downside is that you can't use the effect to steal in the battle phase, and that's most likely when this card would get flipped up. I guess it's 1700 defense, so at the very least it can like wall up for a bit, but I don't know. I might side this out. We'll see. Two Jedi Gumo, happy about this. This is like the best beater I could have possibly gotten, so I'm happy to see it. One Mooka Mooka. Mooka Mooka and Cyber Jar have an interesting synergy because Cyber Jar loads the hand up very quickly and that could boost Mooka Mooka to like stratospheric attack power and so I, it's not like I'm relying on that but it's a nice way that if I'm in the late game Mooka Mooka and Cyber Jar can actually still be pretty potent together. I am playing the one Shining Angel because since I'm playing a few tribute monsters Shining Angel can get me either Unhappy Maiden or Spirit of the Harp. I think it can also get Ceremonial Bell. So if Robert just has one monster Shining Angel can just trade for something else and then I can sack for one of my tribute monsters. So I figured we throw it in here. It's pretty decent. Unhappy Happy Maiden is a way to slow down the game a little bit. Which of the Black Forest? Because it can search most of our deck. We have seven colored fish. Only one, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. We are playing the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Now remember, Robert and I both have access to the promos as well from this. And so I figure having a big beater like this might be pretty good in some instances. Blue Wing and Crown is 1600 beater as well as Fire Kraken. Giant Soldier of Stone is the first of our 2k defense lineup. We have a few of these. This Prevent Rat and three copies of Spirit of the Heart. 
harp. So these are ideally going to wall up long enough that we can see one of our tribute monsters. Guardian of the Throne Room is a 1650 attacker, as well as two copies of Whiptail Crow. These are also good if Robert did get shield and sword or like block attack, I guess, because they have almost the exact same defense as their attack. And so that's good for that reason specifically. We are playing Red Eyes Black Dragon. We are playing Summon Skull and I am playing Polymerization as well. I'm only playing one of it because even though I have access to three, I don't think it's good to clog my deck with this card because if I get Polymerization, but I don't have the Summon Skull or the Red Eyes, it doesn't matter. But if we're able to summon Black Skull Dragon, Robert will never be able to live that down. And this card is also just a house. This is probably just game over if we can summon this. Summon Skull though by itself is probably like one of the best cards in our deck, which can actually search it, which is really nice. And Summon Skull just being 2,500 hits over almost everything in the format. I think if you wanted to kill this, you either need some spell or like Jirai Gumo and an equip spell basically. But this card is going to be a nightmare to deal with, but I'm happy that we both have access to it. And then for the spells, three block attack. This is actually insane that we pulled this because this is one of the best removal tools we have. One Curse of Fiend. This is like a block attack stop defense hybrid. It's a very weird card, but if we're like behind on the board, this could be a way for us to get back in it. One Dark Hole, super stoked to pull this. This could be a nice way to clean up if we fall far behind. One Fisher for dealing with any singular threats. Like if Robert decides to just jam Summon Skull or like Blue Eyes, we can just Fisher it away if he doesn't have another monster. One Malevolent Nuzzler. It's basically the best equip spell we have. One Shield and Sword. This one's interesting because we can turn our 2k defenders into 2k attackers. And so being able to modulate the attack and defense values can actually be very good in certain instances. Stim packs like a shittier Malevolent Nuzzler. One stop defense to go with the three block attack. And then one sort of deep seated. This card has fucked me over in progression series and other things before. And so I'm a little bit iffy, but just having an extra 500 can be really good. If we have like four monsters in this card, even if Robert keeps killing the monsters, like we have constant threats. This card's really bad if we only have like one monster. And so hopefully that won't be the case. And then two copies of Fairy's Hand Mirror for our trap lineup. So we have about seven ish cards in our deck that target the block attack the stop defense, and then the equip spells also all target as well, being Sword, Stim Pack, and Malevolent Nuzzler. So if Robert were to use any of those cards for his own doing, then we can use the Fairy's Hand Mirror to redirect it to any of his monsters, or in the case of the equip spells, we can equip them to our monsters, so that way we get the benefit of it. I think Taylor the Fickle might be a little bit better, but we can redirect Block Attack and Stop Defense, so that could be pretty handy. The extra deck is completely irrelevant except for Black Skull Dragon, of course, because we are playing the Summon Skull and the Red Eyes. So if it comes up, that's going to be hype. Side deck's a bunch of other like playable stuff. Arm Ninja, maybe if he plays like Swords of Revealing Light. White Magical Hat, if I see an opening where this is good. Skull Redbird's just another beater. It's the next strongest beater I have access to. Spells, Chain Energy could speed the game up a little bit. Chorus of Sanctuary will allow my defenders to live longer, but it's a one of. Two Germ Infection, it's like a very, very slow removal card. So I don't know if we'll play it. Gravekeeper Servant's good to mill some of his better cards off the top if the game does go long. And we are playing some 2k bodies, so maybe this is worth playing. I am playing the other two polys in the side deck in case I do really want to try for the Black Skull, but again, I don't think it's good to rely on that, but we'll see. Three remove trap in case Robert gets any crazy traps out of like Metal Raiders because uh, I have gotten blown out before. One toll again to just make the game go a little bit quicker if necessary. And then one house of adhesive tape. Uh, the only reason I'm playing this is that it actually basically is trap hole for Jirai Gumo specifically. I think it can also kill Dark Zebra and uh, not a fantastic card, not a fantastic card at all. But if Robert does pull like three Dry Gumo, the fact that it's like a removal tool for that specifically is pretty good. I don't know if it kills anything else, to be honest, but I didn't know what else to put in the side deck. So I figured, you know, maybe it'll come up. So I can't wait to see what Robert brought to the table today. It's going to be interesting since this is the first time we're using cards from multiple sets in a single deck. So we get to see some synergies across the different sets, but this is going to be a disaster. Let's be perfectly honest. So ladies and gentlemen, it's time to duel. Post Malone, welcome back to another sealed showdown. This is a very interesting one. The first ever opportunity for us to mix sets together, courtesy of the 2002 tins. Bit of a weird one. It kind of felt strange not being able to just only use one pack because we've just been doing that for so long. How are you feeling going into this one, buddy? What a bizarre opening that was. 
I don't think I was expecting just how dependent I would be on the little strategies that you could get out of opening a bunch of the same pack. But it turns out there are a lot of cards that are decent in a one pack environment that are garbo in a mixed pack yeah. environment <laughs> that is exactly what i felt as well i was almost wishing i had more packs of like certain packs because once you get to a point like the cards just don't really like meld together all that well or maybe like one of your sets of packs just had like absolute garbage when it could have had good stuff and you just wanted a few more to maybe get like that good common or that good rare out of the set yep so it, it was just definitely a different experience but i think it's cool that in the spirit of sealed showdown that we can actually give this a shot and who knows maybe this is something the fans are going to really enjoy just because it's going to break up the singularity of just one tone packs moving forward especially once we get to like dark beginning dark revelation can you imagine how crazy those I sets are going to so be so <laughs> excited for those sets and the collector's tins they're really a good memory for me in the game there was very little that was as exciting as getting a collector's tin you got one of your favorite cards and you got a variety of packs and it was just so much fun. The tins originally were gorgeous. I love those yeah. original tins. All right, buddy. You ready? Let's go ahead and do it. Okay. We're going to shout out our patron too. It is Jack Caron. I apologize if I butcher your last name. Oh, you're going okay. uh, to get to go first. I okay. am going okay. to go first. And this time, surprise, surprise, I am actually going to choose first. What am I going to I think to that might be something with? the fans are happy to see. Good luck to you, buddy. Uh, nice nine card extra deck noob. Ooh, 15 cards in the extra deck. We're getting fancy <laughs> now with the three of poly course. back in the game. That could actually be something. I'm going to start by be. drawing for turn. I'm glad you remembered. I was about to just shame you for it. <laughs> I am going to start quite humbly with a T set and pass. Your turn. This is so weird because since we're mixing packs, there is the potential for back row to be real. For the last few episodes, not all of them, but like Metal Raiders and Pharaoh Servants specifically, uh, traps were real, right? But Magic Ruler and LOB, we really didn't have to worry about traps. And again, the card pools are completely different. So we can't really like think about what we had prior because now it could just be a completely different game at this point. It's a little bit scary. I'll yeah. go ahead and draw. You know, Robert, I liked your move so much. I think, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and copy it. So I'll go ahead and set a pair myself and pass it back. Okay. The move of cowards to begin this game with, Alex. Ooh, I got some I set you up pretty well here. to tribute summon for that uh, that summon skull you probably have in your hand. Well, we'll see. I've got some options available to me. I like a lot of them and I don't like some of them. Do I want to? So things you could have face down are numerous. You could have any number of 2000 defenders. You could have a man eater bug face down. You could have any of the Possible. recruiters. It could be a witch of the black forest or Sangin. It's just like impossible to tell what you're starting off with. But I do think that the majority of those things are going to lose to a normal summoned dark zebra. Okay. Equipped with a sword of deep seated. Ooh, okay. Interesting. Going all in on this dark zebra here, I see. Going very deep on the dark zebra. And I'm going to go into the battle phase. I'm going to swing into that man-eater bug you got face down. So it's not a man-eater bug. Okay. It's worse. It's a Witch of the Black Forest. Ooh, do not like to see that. So I will add a monster with less than 1,500 defense from my deck to my hand. And we've got a lot of options. So I want to think about... About what's best. Yeah, which is a great pull in this set. So with my Witch of the Black Forest, I've thought it over. This is actually a bit of a tough one. I do think, however, I'm going to go with the good old classic seven colored fish. Not a bad choice at all, Alex. And with that, I am going to end my turn. Okay. We'll draw. Do you need to deal with the issue at hand here and have a couple ways of going about doing that. So let's go ahead and normal summon out this seven colored fish. Okay, an interesting, interesting play. That fine? That is a-okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and block attack your dark zebra. Ooh, a good move. Okay, there it goes. 
So we're going to go to battle. We're going to hit into your zebra here. And this is going to force Sword of Deep Seated to the top of your deck. Yep. And uh, that's actually great because it blanks your draw, which is one of the biggest downsides of that card and why I absolutely despise it. I'll just pass the turn, buddy. Go ahead. I'll draw. It could be literally anything, Alex. <laughs> You're catching on. You're catching on. It could be literally anything. But one thing it is not is the Jirai Gumo that I have in oh, my hand. Oh, Jesus Christ. Christ. Yep. Are you, are you going to really play this game, Robert? Are you really going to play this game? Absolutely. <laughs> Let's go into the battle phase. Let's swing in. And I hope you get punished. I hope you get fucking murdered. <sighs> What's for this, this going to be? What's it going to be, buddy? Call it. I am feeling heads. Oh, you're going to get so fucked. Ooh, oh, minus four let's grand. Go four K for that attack. How does it feel, buddy? <laughs> it feels like you having an empty field still, Alex. Your go. All right, we'll see how long that lasts. I'll go ahead and draw. Oh, that would have been nice. So I know you have sword and two other cards. I do not know. God, there's there's a couple ways I could go about this, and it's it's a bit scary, but I think this may be the right thing to do. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and lead with. Fire Kraken. Fire Kraken. <laughs> I see I am not the only one scraping the bottom of the barrel on this one. Hey, this beats Skull Redbird. We are not at the bottom of the barrel yet, buddy. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm going to block attack your Jirai Gubo. Another one. Oh, Another my one. goodness. Yep. yep. Let's see how many good monsters you actually have here. Uh, we'll hit over him. Okay, there goes the boy. And uh, I think we'll just pass on that. I mean, 1600 attack is not the best, but it, uh, we'll see. You know, it could be better and it could be worse. Is this really where this game is going to take me? <laughs> Is this really <laughs> what I'm doing this game? Oh, I love to hear that. Your life points already got halved, so I appreciate you doing half the work for me, because this would have been a much longer game otherwise. <laughs> I know, I'm definitely doing a lot of work to, to end this game quickly, but you know, having field presence is just too good. I'm going to normal summon a dark Shh. elf. Shit. And I am going to pay my 1,000 to go to the battle phase and slap that there fire kraken. All right, I only take 400 from this. Uh, yeah, th these exchanges are not looking well for you, buddy. <laughs> Life point wise, no, but the number of pluses I've gotten so far out of this is not terrible. That's fair, that's fair. It is your go. All right, we'll draw. Okay, so what's the worst case scenario now? I know you have a sword, two unknowns still. You have a set, I'm gonna get pretty ugly. It can get pretty ugly. Let me tell you, Alex, pretty ugly was my pulls this set. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely empathize, that's for sure. Let's go ahead and set one, and I'll pass the turn. Okay, let's draw for turn. Oh, that certainly could be worse. I'm going to lead off with a stop defense on your oh, face down Oh, I was afraid monster. of this. I was afraid of this. Uh, so it is the unhappy maiden. Ooh, I love to see that zero attack stat line. Okay. I don't. <laughs> I especially love to see it after I tribute summon my summoned skull. No. Oh my God. There he is. There yep. he is, the boy himself. Let's go to the battle phase and I'm going to attack with my summon skull so that you can stop me from paying my a thousand on dark elf yeah fortunately i will appreciate the fact that i don't take an extra 2k here <laughs> yeah that would have been pretty brutal it is your go all right i will draw <laughs> that was a noise oh no <laughs> Uh, that's a play. No, we don't do that. Okay. So, unfortunately for you, you played right into my hands, and I do have the dark, dark hole. hole. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, there was no way I was going to play around that card. I, I was surprised you committed into it, knowing it was Unhappy Maiden, but I guess I could see the argument for getting 2,500 in and not having to pay 1,000 off of Dark Elf. Yeah. So, it's fine. I will set a card, and I will pass the turn. And you will understand why I was laughing maybe momentarily. Okay, I'm gonna draw for turn, and I'm going to do something you were probably not expecting from me, Alex. I am going okay. to set one. I am going to set two. 
I am going to normal summon flash assailant. Ooh, getting in. Okay. And I am going to, let's see, that could be a 2k defender. You said that I would understand why you didn't go for a particular play after this, which... Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just playing mind games with you. You're always playing mind games I with am playing me. mind that's... games with you. Yeah, that's the best part of this game. <laughs> okay, Alex, I think this has to be the play. For my final move, I am going to equip my flash assailant with dark energy. You are not playing dark energy. <laughs> Did I not tell you I was scraping the bottom of the barrel, Alex? That's scraping the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, it is okay. We've officially the reached barrel. the bottom of this the barrel. This is the bottom of the barrel, Alex. I think this might be through the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> dark energy. I'm digging a hole for myself this with this one, Alex. I'm okay, go so you have a 2300 phase. flash assailant. It is yeah. a 2300 flash assailant, and I am looking forward to a man-eater bug on your field. So it's not that. It's actually something much worse for me now because it's going to kind of bite me. So okay. I'm going to flip the ceremonial bell. Ooh, okay. So now you're going to get to see what's in my hand. Let's see what uh, you before got. Before this will go to grave. So I have a shield and sword, which is, which is what I was initially <laughs> thinking about doing to kill your son in the skull. How does ceremonial that bell. feel right now, Alex? Yeah. And then I also... I I can't believe it was Flash Assailant of all things. I also have a Summon Skull in my hand. Oh, well. I am so happy to see those two cards, Alex. Wow. Flash Assailant, Dark Elf, Summon Skull, Jirai Gumo. Your hand was cracked. Yeah, it was real good. And I am going to let you take your turn, Alex. All right, we'll draw. Uh, so this is going to be interesting because your Flash Assailant also gains defense from Dark Energy as well. It does. You also have the Sword of Deep Seated set, and that's kind of scary because you can just pump this guy up to like 28 right now. I could. Uh, yeah, that's kind of bad. So the downside of Flash Assailant is that if you don't draw a card that you can play, he will, in fact, lose attack points. And that could be beneficial depending on the way things go. Could be. The likelihood of you getting a card, though, is pretty high. So I'm not too enthused about. All right, I'm going to normal summon Whiptail Crow and pass. Normal summon Whiptail Crow pass. Interesting choice. I'm... So your Flash Assailant is now down to 1,900. It is down to 1,900 until I normal summon my guardian of the throne room well that's a good one too yep um and i am not going to play around mirror force who am i kidding i'm not gonna play around mirror force i'm gonna attack <laughs> right into that whiptail crow okay so i will take 650 and then i will take a 1650 from this guardian of the throne room Yep, and it is your go, Alex. All right, let's draw. In the standby phase... Am I about to get Curse of Fiended? See, <laughs> it's cool because I drew Curse of Fiend, but uh, you can just switch everything back on your next turn. That's true. So, yeah, I think you got the first game, buddy. I think you got the first... Woo! You know the rest of my hand, so there's no surprises. Congrats on that one, jeez. Robert, I got to hand it to you. I mean, when you open crazy like that, I mean, there's not much I can do. And that flash assailant definitely carried you. I mocked the dark energy. And <laughs> honestly, that was like the difference maker. It, it worked out. Yes. <laughs> It's pretty good. Uh, maybe I fired those block attacks too early, but like those are some of like the best cards in your deck. And like how uh, how likely is it you're going to have like multiple, multiple of them? You went through two block attacks in the dark know, hole and still got big cards on me. How I likely first, is though. it? And it? Yeah, it's apparently pretty likely. Uh, hopefully we're not going to have a repeat performance there. I will go ahead and draw. Good luck, buddy. Let's see what we can make happen here. All right. I think I'm going to go nice and simple here. And I think I'm just going to set one and pass the turn. All right, Alex. It's time for me to show off the one card that may have made this opening worth it. And I am so lucky it showed up when it did. Alex? No. What's better than Uno? <laughs> How about Duo? Oh, <laughs> fuck off. You did not pull this. <laughs> Oh, Christ. 
I'm going to discard this card from your hand, Alex. Uh, it's my Mooka Mooka. That's a good one. Ah, uh, could be worse. Could be worse. I am going to get rid of polymerization as my choice. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Not I think a I have to, to given the contents of my hand. I I wanted to, you know, save it for a possible huge play, but yep. duo is just insane. Yeah, you're good. And with that, I am going to set a monster and two back row and uh, uh, uh you're go two back row crazy all right i'll draw uh i'll go to main one and duo is crazy yeah oh my god in our format like the duo is just nuts all right robert i loved your move so much i will uh reciprocate go ahead i'm gonna draw for turn that's Mm, not nothing. Would not like to see a summon to skull right now. The chance. I don't think either one of us would like to see a summon skull no. right now. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do the same thing, Alex. I'm gonna set and I'm gonna end my turn. Interesting. All right, I'll draw. So last game I saw you had Cocoon of Evolution, which is an interesting one. I saw a bunch of other cards that you had as well, but they were also just like large attackers. I don't think you would set Flash Assailant because Flash Assailant would be lowered by 800. So you'd be down to like 12. It doesn't seem like particularly strong. Okay, I'm going to normal summon Guardian of the Throne Room. Okay. He's a formidable monster. He's He's okay. He's all right. Question is, A, do I want to attack? I don't really fear a whole lot. I mean, like, you did have Mirror Force in the Metal Raiders episode. I highly doubt you pulled it again. I mean, you could have. You got Duo, but you have half the packs to get it this time around, too. So let's assume I am going to attack. The question then becomes, what do I want to attack? because I feel like you may be led with your best monster. You could have led with something just, you know, as bait and maybe you set something else. It's definitely an interesting one. There's a lot of 2K defenders in this format. Uh, the fact that, you know, I'm playing Ceremonial Bell means that Guardian the Throw Room can't hit over that either. Do I care necessarily? Maybe not. I'm playing pretty defensively. Yeah, right, let's get aggressive. I'm going to equip Sword of Deep Seated to my Guardian. Oh, fuck. No, that's bad. Okay. Yeah. We'll go to battle. Uh, I'm going to roll it. I'm just going to randomly pick which one I'm hitting. All right. I'm going to hit your first one. Okay. Not a fan. Is there anything I can do? about that? No, there isn't. It is my mask oh, sorcerer. Oh, mask sorcerer. Okay, yeah. Okay, that's bottom of the barrel. Dark <laughs> energy is like the scum that's like dripping off of the barrel. Mask sorcerer is the bottom of the barrel. I will pass. Go ahead. I got a very top heavy set of pulls, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> clearly, clearly. Um, At least you saw the whole top end in your last game. <laughs> I did see the, oh, you're kidding me. Oh, you're kidding me. Alex, you have have no idea how much of a genius you are. Um, <laughs> just have to set this face down, and it's your go, Alex. That's a bit sketchy. All right, I'll draw. Oh, sketchy is not the half of it. Three face downs, really? What is the set monster? I'd love to tell you, Alex. How about we find out? I'm going to flip summon Invader of the Throne. What? And Invader of the Throne will trigger, and we will switch positions of our, or switch possession rather, of both oh. of our monsters. So oh, go ahead and give me that set monster. Let's like see what you're that. working with. Let's see what you're working mm. with over there, buddy. Mm -mm. Oh, it was Cocoon. Uh, okay, that's fine. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I can easily hit through my own invader, which isn't a problem. So let's go ahead and let's bring out the Whiptail Crow. Uh, let's slam into the invader. Okay, I will take 850. 800, they're both 50s. Oh, they are both 50s. Yeah, but you will take 1650 from the crow here. I will take 1650 from the crow. I was a little bit afraid that it might have been like a cyber jar and you wanted me to like hit into it rather than you flipping it on your turn. So I wanted to try to preempt that if I could. It uh, worked go ahead, out. buddy. Yeah, I did never, I never thought I would activate the effect of Invader of the Throne. That card is oh, terrible. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, Alex, this has come together in the worst possible way. I am going to set a single back row, and I am going to end my <laughs> Four turn. Four back row. 
<laughs> okay, I'll draw. Uh, let's see. So I've got 2150, 22. I have 3,800 damage on board. So if I wanted to kill you, I need to find a way to get another 750 worth of damage on the field. Also assuming that you, of course, don't have mirror force, which I don't know. You, I, I feel like you probably would have mirror forced these two, but I mean, you could save it for this exact moment, I guess. So the question is, do I go for it? How much do I want to overcommit here? I feel like I've got a pretty good grip on the game. I'm just going to go to battle. I'm going to hit for 1650. I'm going to take 1650. How about 2150? I am also going to take 2150. Okay. I probably talked myself out of lethal here, but it's okay. I'll pass. Go ahead. Draw for turn. What's it going to be? Okay. That's not nothing. Is it something I can actually work with is the question. Well, if... If all goes well, I will survive the turn on this. I'm going to normal summon a dark zebra. Sure. I'm going to battle phase, lap into that there whiptail crow. I'll take the 150. You do that. And I will end my turn. All right. We will draw. And I think we can try to wrap this one up. I was trying to think about what you possibly could have set. Could just be all terrible cards like dark energy and you can't equip them to anything. That's pretty realistic. It is four rush recklessly. You know, that would be broken, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Although I feel like you would have used those at some point and not be saving them for this exact moment. Could be wrong, but... It's hard to say. All right. Yeah, we'll try to wrap it up. Let's bring out the Jirai Gumo. Yep. And, uh, yep, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that was the type of draw I was afraid. Well, Alex, congrats on forcing the first game three of the series so far. That was... That's so crazy in five episodes. Five it took episodes. us this long to get to a game three. Absurd. Absolutely absurd. That was about as one-sided as all of our episodes <laughs> so far have been. I, I can't believe I lost through Duo. But I'm going to go first, and hopefully that doesn't happen again. All right. Good luck, buddy. I'm uh, I'm very curious to see how this is going to play out. This has been interesting seeing the, the card pools, you know, melding together. So let's see what you got. All right. I'm going to start off by drawing for turn. Oh, this... This might be the start I was looking for. Okay. Don't like to hear that. What am I going to start with? Am I going to start with a thing that's just going to produce all sorts of question marks for you? That sounds like fun. I sure. do like that. And I think I am going to do it. I am going to start off by setting a monster, setting a back row, and activating a good friend from another episode, Chorus of Sanctuary. Oh, God. Okay, in all fairness, I was actually side-decking this, too, because I don't <laughs> think this card is actually that bad. It's not bad, especially in this format, and I'm going to let you go, Alex. Okay, I will draw in the standby phase. No! I will activate Curse of Fiend, oh fucker! God. Flip him up! Flip him up! <laughs> Guess who? Ooh! Oh, nice little mask no. sorcerer there, eh? Yep. Oh, that would be a bit unfortunate if I could match it with my Witch of the Black Forest. Ooh, could be worse. I will take my in. 200. Yeah, it's, it's not fantastic, but it does clear it, so I'm happy to not see Not the worst damage I could have taken in this situation. No, it could have been much worse, yeah, All but... Right. It, which is good, too, because it'll replace itself if you kill it. So, you know, it, it kind of breaks it even. It will replace itself if I kill it. I'm going to. I was really hoping to just get, like, a cocoon or something just big. Yeah. I'm going to main phase one, where I will have a lot of question marks to deal with here. That witch is not fun to see early on. There is so no. much that you can get off of it. I almost need to get rid of it immediately. The problem with that is anything that you can get off of witch is going to be worse for me than witch. Right. It's a weird conundrum, isn't it? It is. <laughs> You've got some good monsters in your deck. Among them are Jirai Gumo. Summon Skull would be a blowout. This game would basically be over if you dropped a Summon Skull off uh, on top of Witch. But not totally over. There are ways around that combo. There are other tribute summons you could go for. You could grab a Jirai Gumo off the top of your deck. It could also be just a seven colored fish that you drop. You also could consider you have Chorus of Sanctuary up. So basically anything you set, which won't run over. Yeah. So there's that too. There <laughs> is that. I am going to set a monster and let you go. That's exactly what I was expecting. All right. I will draw. Oh, that's actually really funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, do I want to keep doing this? This is kind of fun, but I don't know if it's good. Uh, it's a bit tricky, actually. Oh, but it's so funny. What a weird series of game states we found ourselves yeah. in. <laughs> Definitely unique. Definitely <laughs> unique. Oh, this this has... No, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. All right, I'm going to put Witch to Defense. I'm going to set one, and I'm going to pass the turn. Yeah, that seems like a pretty smart move. There's a lot of things that you could have set, and I, I don't think Witch being the lead attacker is probably ideal, so we can wall up a bit. Okay. It also gets the boost from your course of Sanctuary, it, so it actually makes it slightly more difficult difficult for you to hit over with any of the 1600s. It does indeed do that. If I go on the aggressive, with the exception of a few monsters that I could play to run over witch, anything you get off of your witch is going to be better than the thing that I'm going to use to get over it. Man, I hate to say it, but it seems like the move is to set a monster face down and end my turn. Huh, flashbacks of LOB format, Indeed. my favorite. I will draw. Are we really just going to have one of these games, Robert? It's possible, Alex. Just like, just the, just the set pass game under course of Sanctuary, which makes it even more yep. <laughs> even more fun <laughs> oh my god all right I'll, I'll play your game. Go okay. ahead. Okay. Well, I'm going to draw for turn. Okay, that starts making this truly interesting. I am going to start off the aggression. There are so many 2K defenders, although in all fairness, I don't think I've seen a single 2K defender out of you, Alex. I don't think you have. That's the correct. The biggest thing I've seen is Ceremonial Bell, which is... <laughs> It's got a hell of a booty under Chorus of Sanctuary, but it isn't exactly what I would call a threat right now. Sure. I think the time has come for me to start going on the aggressive. If these are 2k defenders, um, I'm in trouble, but I'm going to normal summon my Dark Elf. Sure. Okay. That's a big one. And I am going to set two cards. I'm going to go into the battle phase, and I'm going to pay my 1,000 to attack into your newest monster. It is a spirit of the heart. Ah, uh, yep. Get punished. <laughs> <laughs> to the extent that taking 500 because of Chorus of Sanctuary is a punishment. Yep. But it is all you, boo. What is it with all of the defensive monsters having, like, musical resemblance? Spirit of the Harp, Chorus of Sanctuary, Ceremonial Bell. That's just, like, a weird... I, the fact that I'm even thinking about this shows we've been in this format and far too long. And, of course, you know, there's Giant Soldier of Stone, who plays rock music, am I right? Oh, shut up. Shut up. Oh my god. Uh, you are so proud of yourself for that one, I can tell. I think I'm just going to set one. I'm going to pass. I'm not in any hurry. Incredible. All right, I'm going to draw for turn. That's a card. God, you have dark hole. <laughs> That's scary, isn't it? <laughs> I was just like, oh, yeah, I could just keep committing monsters. Mm, potentially not so. I'm not under a huge amount of pressure to do anything particularly spectacular. If I attack with Dark Elf, and that's another defender that you have face down, it's not great for me, but I'd rather know what I'm working with. The LOB strats coming back. <laughs> they are indeed. I am going to enter the battle phase. Sure. I'm going to pay my 1,000, okay. and I'm going to attack into this face down. And you're going to take another 500. <laughs> <laughs> How Whoops, that is not did you what see? I took, although it feels like it. How many 2K defenders did you did you see in the first two games? Zero. <laughs> well, Alex, you saw very little of the worthwhile cards that I got in game one. True, true. These are rares to be That's fair. True. So it's like it's it's not like super likely it we're gonna we're gonna get a ton decreases of decreases the likelihood that you got Fisher, which I appreciate. Uh... <laughs> Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> now, this is a game like, state I, I, that's I, I, much more I, familiar to me. <laughs> yeah, this is this is definitely our comfort zone okay. for sure. Oh, boy. None of this really helps me much at all. If I attack into that witch, you're just going to grab a Jirai Gumo, which is not in my best interest. So I really just, I got to let you go. I can understand. It's, it's, it's kind of scary. I'll draw. All right, I'll set one. I'll do something this turn and I'll pass. Okay. I will draw for turn. That is not nothing. Okay. The question is, how worthwhile is it right now? A bunch of 2k defenders that are currently 25k defenders, which is yep. deeply exciting. 
Um, Courtesy of your chorus of sanctuary. Thank you for that. Indeed. You have another monster <laughs> face down now, which makes Dark Hole less profitable to you. God, what a weird format. This is where you lure me into a false sense of security with your chorus of sanctuary, and then you play another field spell and then have ways to get over all the 2K defenders. <laughs> <laughs> That's not at all what I'm stalling for, Alex. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> not worth my time and you probably would not have said another monster that would not defend against dark elf you forget who you're dealing with robert i do a lot of crazy things the mind game master himself well after all it that deliberation i am going to set a monster and end my turn and if you are hiding that dark uh, hole for the witch behind you i am you know i i am ready <laughs> Could have been invader of the throne, and I could be trying to steal your dark elf. That would be brutal. And that would be the punish, to be fair. It would be. Not that your dark elf on your side of the field would do a huge amount under course of sanctuary either. Fair. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could get over my own invader of the throne, oh, that's but true. that would probably be about it. Yeah. After a very quick and active couple of first games. This is what I was expecting this episode <laughs> yeah. to be. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. All right. And draw for turn. One of us is just going to draw a haymaker at one point, and that's where things are just going to get real uh, and scary. Eventually, yes. Oh, well, that's that's a thing. That's not terrible. I could do worse than that. Is the move really to just maintain the status quo until further notice? <laughs> what is the likelihood that you get a haymaker and I don't? I know you also have Summoned Skull. You have Dark Hole, which you haven't shown me yet, which still would be live with Witch on your field. Yeah, and if you get Dark Hole and Witch gets you a Jirai Gumo, and I've paid again for Dark Elf only to run into nothing, I am done So I gotta end my turn, Alex. <laughs> All right, we'll draw. I'm going to switch my Witch of the Black Forest to attack position. Am I about to get shield and sworded? Or are you just switching it to attack position to give it its last hurrah before it's tributed for summoned skull? <laughs> that would be the ultimate slow roll. But that is not what I have planned, unfortunately. Ooh, a plan. I don't know if I call it a plan. It's more of a thought at the moment. I'm going to set one and I'm going to pass the turn. Spectacular. Oh, uh, that's still not worth it. <laughs> I'm drawing cards I can play, Alex, but there's just... To what end? <laughs> what have I done to this game, Alex? <laughs> you know, I really wish this was how the game went during my Empty Jar deck. Do I go after one of the 2k defenders here? It's wild, Alex. I, you know, I have the potential to start increasing my card economy here, but it one of the things that makes these early formats unique is that field presence is almost more worthwhile than card economy. And at the cost sure. of a thousand life points per turn, card economy that doesn't get me more field presence isn't actually worth very much. And you can just pass. We're just playing the same game. I could just pass. I think that's the move. Okay. Let's go ahead and draw. Okay. Robert. Yes? How lucky you feeling today, buddy? I am feeling... <laughs> well, after my first... Uh, after my pack opening and then the way I opened last game, I'm not <laughs> feeling terribly lucky, Alex, let me tell you. I'm about to make things very interesting right now. Ooh. You ready, buddy? I am probably not. I'm going to flip summon Cyberjaw! Ooh! Well, Alex... <laughs> Guess what you are sending to the graveyard? I'll start with my Witch of the Black Forest, shall okay. I? <laughs> and then it's just a bunch of jank. I don't know what I'm talking okay, about Okay, sure, sure. Uh, my Whiptail Crow was the other set. So you were right not to attack with the Dark Elf. Okay. All right, so uh, should I go first or do you want to go first, buddy? <laughs> Why don't you go first? All right, so I will go ahead and mill... Uh, uh, you know, let's, do, let's be a little more, more dramatic. Let's go ahead and do one at a time. Dark Hole. Oh, that would be nice to get. no. Okay. We'll add that to hand. Oh, whoops. Uh, that was a uh, fairy's hand mirror. So okay. that'll go to hand. We're going to mill a unhappy maiden. Didn't want to see that, to be honest. Uh, we'll throw okay. her in defense. Could be worse. Our fourth card is a Jurai Goo. Oh, okay. no. And we'll put him in attack. And for our okay. last card, a malevolent nuzzler going to hand. All right, Robert. Okay. Now it's let's, your five. Let's see what I can get, Alex. We'll start with Ooh. a Jirai Gomo of my own. Nice one. Nice one. Next, we have 
a magician of faith with okay. nothing. Okay, no spells in grave. <laughs> like to see it. Like to see oh, it. Oh <laughs> no! Oh, moth the betrayal. Okay, and then next we have a paralyzing potion. Could be worse. Could be worse. Okay. Fourth, we have a, a dark zebra. Mm, I'll put that in attack. I'd rather you n not just have the ability to run over it. And finally. I'm going to banish another, another chorus, chorus of sanctions. Of sanctions. <laughs> you know, it's online to, uh, now, so could be doing worse. All right, so you get that to your hand. Then we both have witch triggers to resolve. Uh, I am turn player, so I'm chain link one. You will be chain link two. So you get to search first, so I get to see okay. what you're going to grab. Ah, finally. Okay. The chances that you can stop me from summoning a summon to skull are fairly low. This seems as good a time as any to reveal that this is a threat. My second Jirai Gumo. Okay, that's a pretty good one. With my Witch of the Black Forest, I am going to grab Shocker, the Summon Skull. Oh, incredible. Now this is a problem, Robert. Uh, we both have a lot of fucking cards in our hand. <laughs> it's a lot of cards in our hand. Talk about choice paralysis here. I, I don't know how I feel about this, but kind of dig it. So okay. I I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do it. Uh, let's fire off Dark Hole. What is going on here? Oh, you know, I will accept it. I'll be honest, the hits off of the Cyber Jar were not the best for me, and they favored you a little bit more, so I actually think I just want to go ahead and clean up here. So I'm just going to bring out a Guardian of the Throne Room. Is that fine? That is A-OK, -okay, Alex. And Robert, that was your last move, because I what? will activate Polymerization! What? Sending <laughs> Summon Skull and oh! Rise Black oh! Dragon to Summon Black Skull Dragon! Hey! What? The boy Dude, himself? Shit, motherfucker! Let's Holy go! <laughs> oh, that is an honorable defeat. I will <laughs> accept this one, Alex. So I, I was going to summon Black Skull and just basically let you just quake in fear trying to have to deal with this card because I had the red eyes in hand the whole time and I drew Polly on like turn three or something. But then you had the paralyzing potion I saw off of the Cyber Jar. And so I thought, I have to kill you now. Otherwise, this thing is never going to get another attack in. So I had the Dark Hole, thankfully, from the Cyber Jar. And there was no way with the amount of monsters you got. I was hoping you'd only get like one. Then I could just summon in Black Skull, not have to Dark Hole. Jirai Gumo could have like hit over it. And then I still had a normal summon at that point too. So then I would have just killed you that way without using the Dark Hole. But this is way funny. <laughs> that is way funnier, Alex. And my, my available options were pretty cracked. There was just no good thing that one can do in the face of the board state that we had. I'm just going to show you what I have available. So I had a Cocoon. I had a High Tide Gyojin. I've had this Flash Assailant this whole time and while it's been live because basically every card in my hand I could put on the field there was just no payoff because everything on the field had 2500 defense right, which means right. that even <laughs> under Sword of the Deep Seated sure. I suppose I could have gone all in with Sword of the Deep Seated Dark Energy but if I lose that I take a neg 3 plus the Sword of the Deep Seated stack which right. wouldn't have been great I had Darkness Approaches oh which God. even if I drew into something <laughs> I couldn't play this was going to be my out for Summon Skull because anything plus Sword of the Deep Seated or pretty much just anything gets over a defense position summon skull. I had a paralyzing potion and another one of my ridiculous texts from this episode, laser cannon armor. Oh my God, why because, are you playing this? Because I had two Cocoon of Evolution and two Jirai Gumo. Oh, uh, the and Jirai Gumo's inset. That it's actually, an inset. okay, you know what? I actually kind of dig that now that you mention it. That's uh, interesting. And because I sighted into Eternal Rest because I saw your Sword of the Deep Seated, I I figured if you had a Jirai Gumo, I could laser cannon armor your Jirai Gumo and eternal rest it. You saw my chorus of sanctuary. I had a stop defense, but there was just no point at which using that. I did 
that too. card was profitable. I did yep, too. Yep. You and I were in similar situations. So that, you were playing Polly. Yep. I'm going to say this now. Everyone in the comments is going to be, oh, guys, aren't you so glad that you decided to play three Polly? Well, I guess to be fair, I'd have zero Polly. So I guess the comments do win this one. I was only playing <laughs> one Polly. I actually side decked the other two from the get go because I thought it would be very funny if we got this combo off. Because first of all, Black Skull Dragon is just a fucking house of a card. It's 3,200 attack. Like nothing beats this in combat, even with any equip spells. So you literally need actual removal to kill this, which is somewhat of, like a bit scarce in our form. Like block attack won't yeah. do it unless you have like summon skull plus equip spell or something. So yeah. you would actively need like a fissure, a dark hole. There's like maybe f a handful of cards that would actually deal with this card. And so I played the one red eyes. I played the one summon skull and I played the one copy of polymerization because I didn't want to play three copies because I can't consistently get to this combo. But for the exact situation that came up where we are just staring at each other dead in the face and nothing is happening, I was waiting for the opportunity to be able to get the combo pieces assembled because if there's something that can crack through a board like that, it's fucking black skull dragon. Black skull and so dragon. Yeah. that was the thinking behind it. I drew Polly on like turn two and then I saw the red eyes and I realized I had witch on field and I was able to then get the summon skull searched because of the witch and I had the combo. Instead of attacking it into your dark elf, I was trying to get a thousand more life points out of you to be honest, but mm. I set my cyber jar that I was also sitting on the entire time. So then that way the board gets cleaned up. Hopefully you whiff and then I was able to just come in with black skull and kill you that way because I knew you weren't just going to start like slamming into my board at that point and that that was where i saw my opening to uh to go ahead and do that this fairy's hand mirror also would have been very handy because if you tried to paralyzing potion black skull i could have redirected it to guardian of the throne room on this board so if i didn't have lethal i had this to protect it so i thought that was like a pretty neat interaction as well the last few cards in my hand i had a shining angel i had a ceremonial bell that i opted not to set in the face of your dark elf even though i wasn't expecting you to attack it i didn't want you to see my hand because i think i had some i think i might have had some things i didn't want you to see at that point. Uh, okay. I had a Fisher that I was sitting on the whole game and then the Malevolent Nuzzler you saw me get. Oh, uh, yeah. I got no removal. My control options were Paralyzing Potion and uh, and German Faction. And Alex, can you tell me what type Guardian of the Throne Room is? It's a machine. Oh, you can't Paralyzing Potion because <laughs> it's a machine. <laughs> so Guardian of the Throne Room plus Sword of the Steep Seated not only cannot be Paralyzing Potion and it cannot be German faction, it also is 50 more attack points than Masked Sorcerer plus the Reliable Guardian, which basically is a combination that makes the Reliable Guardian into essentially Upstart Goblin plus the potential to uh, to Tribute Summon. I had a Flame Cerberus in hand, which is also 50 smaller than a Guardian of the Throne Room with a Sword of the Deep Seated. If it had been literally any other monster, I would have been in that game because a German German infection plus the cocoon of evolution that I had face down would have given me the time necessary to put that flame Cerberus on the field. I was so pissed. My opener was so so, so good last game. And just because Guardian of the Throne Room has 1650 attack and is a goddamn fucking machine, I could do jack all in the face of it. It was the perfect answer. Holy shit. That's oh incredible. Oh my god. Oh my I am god. so pissed. I can imagine. That must be frustrating. You did get two-pronged attack. Like, that could have also, like, maybe kind of cracked the board open. God, you weren't kidding when you said your pulls were bad, though. This is my pretty bad were so bad. I got two Catapult Turtle, though, which I had in the oh, side perfect. deck. Oh, perfect. Which was you know, funny Catapult because... Catapult Turtle on that board we had pre-Cyber Jar would have been pretty fucking good, I think. So that's that's actually funny. So there were a couple of cards that I sided for stall situations like that, but because your defenders that I had seen so far were just absolute Garbo cards, I figured it wasn't the, worth the commitment since I knew that you had removal like Dark Hole available. Right. And that was just the problem with all of the good cards I ran into including all of my equip combos was just that dark hole plus fissure or literally any removal i didn't get any block attacks i didn't oh my get any and i got three of them it's a common three of them yeah look at i mean my deck compared to yours like it's just
just looked like it was on a different level. I mean, absolutely. I, yeah, I had some 2K defenders. I had some decent equip spells. I had plenty of actual decent removal in the three block attack, the stop defense, dark hole, the fissure as well. I mean, I, I, I got two Jurai Gumo this time around as well, which felt pretty good. You know, my, my beater lineup wasn't stellar, but it, it was fine. Uh, I really wanted to use Fairy's Hand Mirror. And the, uh, oh God, did I really want to do this? So the last card that is currently sitting on the field that was there since like turn one, and I uh -huh. didn't get to use, but would have been the funniest fucking thing. I think this would have been funnier than me summoning Black Skull Dragon, to be honest, is House of Adhesive Tape, because Jurai Gumo has a hundred fucking defense. <laughs> So House of <laughs> Adhesive Tape against Jurai Gumo is literally trap fucking hole. That's and I thought incredible. maybe that would actually come up because if you have multiple Jurai Gumo, also Dark Zebra has 400 defense. And so, that so does is Dark also, Elf, I think. Dark Elf has 800. So oh, no, Dark Elf is spared okay. from the House of Adhesive Tape. But it is. I thought that if you have at least two valid targets, the fact that I have a reactive piece of removal that isn't like a Fissure or a block attack, this card could maybe come up. And I was so waiting for you to drop a Jurai Gumo and just start swinging and it just didn't happen. But I was waiting. I was so waiting for this to happen. This has to be the biggest meme series of all time. I mean, we've had Flower <laughs> Wolf. We've had double Jinzo plus double IO. We've had fucking Crab Turtle meta. We've had me getting blown out by Mirror Force. And to top it all off, we have Black Skull fucking Black Dragon. Black Skull Dragon. The comments are gonna be going off. Yeah. Aren't they're gonna so go glad we include Polly this time around? Around. Yeah, I, I I think this was a good call. The comments are gonna be are a hundred percent gonna be like, yep. See, if you didn't have Polly, you couldn't have done this, and they're a hundred percent right. That's we could true. Not have. I yep. considered the Polly, but I got a bunch of fusion monsters that I got literally one each of the fusion materials for. And with as bad of cards as I had, I figured I could not afford the potential dead cards of a red eyes in the face of Jirai Gumo, Sword of the Deep Seated, and a fucking polymerization. <laughs> in my I deck. actually. I actually did consider, I pulled a Skull Knight, and this nice. thing's actually big. And I actually, for a moment, considered playing Tainted Wisdom Ancient Brain. I think I pulled maybe two of one and three of the other, because they're commons. The problem is, those cards suck. So, they suck so much. Right, like, Summon Skull, <laughs> at least, is, like, actively, like, the best card in our deck most of the time. And Red yeah. Eyes, in a board that we were sitting on earlier, Red Eyes would have been pretty good, but Chorus of Sanctuary still probably could have stopped. It. So yeah. I kind of felt okay with the Black Skull Dragon plan because I'm playing at least one card that I would play regardless. Red Eyes is okay, but it's very situational. And then I have to play the brick that is Polly, of course. But that's better than playing two cards that do absolutely nothing in Tainted Wisdom and Ancient Brain. But 2650 True. is pretty big. Not so I, I thought about it since I was already on the Polly plan. The rest of my my extra deck is just a bunch of cards. I, I got a Flame Swordsman again, though. But nice. um, they were just a bunch of cards that I was never summoning. I just wanted to intimidate you with my 15 card extra day. <laughs> what I really liked about this particular format is this actually was probably just Playground Yu-Gi-Oh. Right. This is what Playground Yu-Gi-Oh would have looked like if people who actually knew anything about the game were playing it. This looked like what I would expect a better version of me as a child to have played. God, it's so much fun. Man, I fucking <laughs> love Yu-Gi-Oh. Like this, I, I'm sorry. Like no other game has highs like this. This is the zenith of everything. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm speechless. The fact that someone Dark Black Hole, Skull Dragon. Black Skull Dragon. No, oh. Cyber Jar, Dark Hole, Black Skull Dragon. <laughs> oh Amazing. my god. Truly incredible. Well, this is one for the ages. I'm so glad that we decided to include side sets in this. Yeah. The memes just keep coming. And Alex, next time we have Labyrinth of Nightmare, I believe. Robert, I have a question for you. What's that question, Alex? Are you going to pay for Fairy Box? <laughs> I am 100% going to pay for Fairy Box. Oh my god, that is going to be a disaster of an episode. I think like Stall slash Mill could be viable because Fairy Box is in that set. Oh my god, that's going to be a very interesting one. We're going to be deviating away from our combination set for the time being and going back to our singular set, but uh, Labyrinth of Nightmare actually has a lot of just very good standalone cards. Uh, there are a couple fusions, I believe, so Polymerization could make its way back in. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Good. But there's a lot of stuff in Labyrinth of Nightmare going on. Fairy Box is Fairy Box. <laughs> the meme returns, Alex.
Oh God. People are gonna think that we're like faking this. This is unbelievable that we've managed to pull off this much crap in five episodes. Uncertain. I know. <laughs> this is like, this is an entire series of you calling MBT's entire hand. <laughs> Basically, like <laughs> each one of these episodes is like on another level. So guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of Sealed Showdown. Shout out to all you guys in the comments for saying for us to add polymerization. And I think that was definitely the correct call. You Anyways, were right. we're happy for the inaugural episode that Polly got to be played in three copies that uh we got to see something pretty fucking awesome if i do say so myself but we have to Indeed. shout out the patrons as always big shout out to shout 1317 show taggonist shot alling jr cameron smith joshua schley and gayoko tim 0 x3 ika iron fang pony stark ian musa michael dente dan the man hoban part two synchro guy mystic walk sylvia wilds in unit taisho draconic dolly wop dragon lord jarvis martin logan thomas peter gregory thomas nelson jordan coons kaelvin iron blades and pure ace jesse wood true nerdgasm cole t benjamin fuller brother paul chris hood lumpy nehru celeste shane reese we don't read our cards that's probably still true david lou rockley 325 lane rogers silent agent 216 brett havey i side in grand Maju and salads sky rose dylan hunter garth Ox, dow john two base apathy astro brody eastwood dace allen and flannel daddy thank you so much for watching the video and we'll see you in labyrinth of nightmare